Hello, I'm Mr. Tie-Dye, and I'm here to tell the unusual story about the tapestry with hearts and darts and the lotus flower and how it came into existence. But you probably already guessed that there was a story behind it from the title. So, I'll start at the beginning. I was doing a live video on Saturday. And on that live video, I demonstrated how to do the Star of David on a t-shirt and got pretty decent results. Could have used a little more saturation. But after I finished shooting this and I did a few other t-shirts, I put things in a tub, set them up, let them batch for the dye to set up, and then I took off for a couple hours. Well, Monday, I came in to wash out my tie-dyes and I found that tapestry had no idea where it came from so after some careful deduction on that I ruled out some possibilities one of the possibilities was somebody else made it though nope, nobody else was here couldn't have happened uh, another thing I thought maybe I made it and forgot about it you know that's unusual but I thought it was a possibility so I went over to my neighbor's house and had her cat run a scan of my brain and I studied that pretty closely and I didn't see any indication of forgetfulness so I ruled out forgetting and once I kind of ruled out all the impossible things then the only thing left was time travel well you've seen that in the the title so anyways I spent the day watching movies and TV shows and I figured out how to do time travel so I came up with the time travel button. So this is Mr. Tide Eye's time travel button. This here is what I use to go back in time and create that tapestry. So let's take a closer look at the tapestry here because I would make some changes if I if it was possible, but you know the time space continuum you can't change things like that just willy-nilly, so Anyway, so I have the tapestry here. I got these hearts, but I didn't quite get the fill I wanted. So that's one thing. If I could change something in this without breaking the space-time continuum, it would have been to tie these individually. So the way that I folded this up, I have layers here. So I could have gone in and tied each one of these separately instead of tying them all together, which is what I did. And I would have got better saturation. And then we got the darts over here. Those filled in pretty nicely. We could have tied those separately too if we wanted to. And then we could have changed the color of the darts. Uh, but that, that still worked out okay. And then the last part I did was the lotus leaves on here. The lotus petals. And those came out pretty decent. But once again you can always make changes next time I might have done the, the darker for the outline and the light for the petal itself and then we got the Ron star up here at the tip so this here once you do your airplane folding this here is how you're actually going to design your tapestry you're going to draw your lines on in the places that you want it uh, so then when it's all opened up and I'm only going to open it halfway up then you get your actual design here and so that's what you have to do when you're looking at a tapestry and you want to figure out how it's done you need to find your fold lines so on this one here this here is one of the lines right from the middle right up through the middle of the heart here so I know that, that there is part of it and then the other line went right up there so we're looking at just this little triangle on this tapestry here and that's how you can kind of figure out how a tapestry was tied up so let's do some time travel so since I have my handy dandy time travel button here well, I guess I should turn this thing on and set the date and the time what I'm gonna do is go back just after I finished up the Star of David t-shirt and I'm gonna show you how I folded this up but you guys can make those changes where I can't do it without breaking the space-time continuum. If you want better hearts on here instead of tying them all at once, like I obviously did here, 
tie them the three different ones individually and you'll get better results there anyways let's take a trip to the past and see how this was done so hold on and here we go whoa okay looks like I made it here so I'm here and I'm going to tie-dye the Lotus Mandela tapestry that you saw so luckily I didn't get to these on Saturday uh, so what I have here is a tapestry that's been soaked in soda ash it's been spun out and then I hung it so it dry it's almost completely dry it's still slightly damp here so what I'm gonna do is put a little line on here so this here has been folded in quarters and this here is the center of my tapestry so I'm gonna put a little dot there because we're gonna to need to find that here in a minute um, so we're gonna open this back up now so this here is just uh, in half Let me clear some of this I didn't clean up after the Star David tapestry Start cleaning up my area here Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, what I'm going to do is show you how I do the Lotus Mandela Tapestry. And then remember there is going to be uh, some hearts and some dots out here too. So I'll show you how to put all of that stuff into this tapestry. So to start with, I'm going to mark this one out. I'm going to do it the same way I did the... Um, Star of David. I'm going to put dots here at every 30 degrees. So I'm going to start at 30, 60, 90, 120, and 150. So those are going to be the degrees. I'm going to draw these lines out further here. So, and there's my ruler. So we're going to extend these lines out so that we can fold this up. And just like the Star of David, we're going to start from the middle point and go out from there. So that's that dot that I drew right in the center when I had it folded in quarters. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this first line here. So I'm grabbing right here at the center of the tapestry and then out here at this edge and pull that up. And if you can kind of crease that fold just a little bit, since mine is still slightly damp, it's going to crease for me. I'm going to pick that up and fold it under. And I'm going to smooth things out here. Now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to fold on this line and I'm going to lay this line over to this next one here. So and then it's just a matter of straightening your tapestry out. And lining your folds up. Sometimes you have to kind of adjust it a little bit just to get it lined up just perfect. So I'm going to pick up this next line and fold it under. Sometimes it's easier if you can pinch that so that you're holding everything together. And then I'm going to hold the center here at the same time. Pick that up and fold it under. What I need is a bigger workspace. So, hopefully that's coming soon. I have a studio to work in, so I can do more videos. Okay, I can feel wrinkles here, so i got to smooth this out a little bit here. And I can see my lines aren't quite lined up under there. But that's okay, it's going to be close enough here. Okay, so we're 
just about ready here. And I like to do it this way. You can just fold it up and up and up, but then you have multiple folds on one side and then one big thick fold on the other. And sometimes that can be harder to get the die down in there. So in this fashion, where I'm just folding back and forth, it's kind of like an accordion fold, just on a bigger scale here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do Straighten the rest of these edges out, and then I'm going to start drawing my fold lines on. So we're going to start from this way. So, uh, where's my, there it is. Okay, so let's see if you can see me out here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give a, a lotus type J. Oh, remember we had the, the, the yellow darts out here. So what I'm going to do is draw that little yellow dart on. So we'll fold that up and then I'm going to actually start my lotus flower right here. So I'm going to, whatever shape you draw and then fold along is going to be the shape of your leaves. So you can do just a straight line, but if you do kind of a, a lotus shape leaf or line, then that's the type of petal you're going to get. So I kind of start down at a sharp angle and then I go out and then round it off. And I'm just going, I'm zigzagging back and forth here. And I'm starting pretty close, but not right on top of where the last line left off at. So you can really kind of shape your tapestry however you want just by how you angle these lines but then you also have to fold those lines so don't make them too crazy and so I think I'm going to do three petals and then down here at the bottom I'll probably do uh, maybe a Ronstar fold there oh and also remember I had the hearts out here so that's what I'm going to draw in on this side so this is going to give me the darts and then my heart will be out here Okay, so those are all the lines I'm going to fold. I'm going to go ahead and start with the heart and the dart just to get those done. With the hearts, I always like to fold from the point. And with all these layers, you're just going to have to really kind of work that fabric around to get everything lined up the way that it needs to be. I still try to do the little short accordion folds, but you can't make them too small or when you try to tie it, it's going to bunch up. So I try to make sure that as I'm folding it and when I pinch it, you know, I can get a nice solid grip on there. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So continue around with the heart. Yeah, so you guys don't have to put the heart in here. I'm just saying that that's one of the possibilities. You can see that it's a little harder to fold because of all of the layers of the fabric in there. And I'm at risk for losing my point here. Okay. We're going to get it. one just because it's so tight there I'm gonna go ahead and tie this one with sinew so just open that up a little bit this would have been a nice time to have a, a slip knot tied in there but I can still make this work so I'm just going to wrap this around a few times pull that tight and just keep cinching it up as I wrap more times around here. Okay. 
that was the start of my sinew. This here is the tail that I want to keep track of. So I'm going to cut this one off longer and then tie my little knot in there. Okay, and then just make sure that all your folds are still in there nicely. And now I'm going to tie this dart up right here. This here's the yellow dart that we had there out the outer edges of the petals. And this is a little easier to fold up. this I'm just going to tie with kite string. So I'll wrap it a few times here to hold it and then I'll wrap up a little bit higher just to make sure that it doesn't want to pull out of there. The mandel or the lotus flower petals. So I'm going to start right here at this one. Fold that down. And the main thing I'm doing is just trying to, as always, keep those lines straight on, on top there and just line the next one up so that these lines kind of match up. So this line matches with that line. And sometimes you have to just kind of manipulate your fabric around a little bit to get it to fold just where you want it, especially when you're going around these corners. But you just keep at it. And you can fold it just the way you want. And in this case, like I say, this fold here had to come up bigger because I'm going around a corner. So sometimes you just have to make adjustments in the how tall the folds are just according to how you've drawn your lines on. Alright, so I'm gonna tie this off and this time I'm not I'm gonna tie it but I'm not going to cut the string because we're gonna go right into the next petal from this position so that way you can just keep that tied on and the, the next one you don't have to try to get anything ready you just have to tie it Okay, so we'll set that back there, and now we're going to fold this next one down. And the other thing is just making sure that you have all your layers in there as you fold this. Now I can stretch, since I have this tied still right here, I can bring that over and then I drag it under this here and then up in between these two spaces here so that I can tie that pedal off right next to this one here. So you just have to bring the string under and then in between here. And I usually like to wrap it just a few times just to make sure it's going to hold tight. Okay. So I'll leave that there and then we're going to fold this last pedal down. Ready? tie this last one. So I'm going to go ahead and go under to start with and then wrap up over top. And that just allows me to kind of keep that all together as I pull this. Here, let's pull that a little tighter. And then we'll just wrap in between these two points. And then I'm going to come back up. So I'm going to wrap that under there. So I'm going back up to the, the middle leaf here, and then I'm going to wrap underneath the top one one more time, 
and then tie it off. That just allows me to kind of tie all three of these leaves together a little bit to hold them in place better. Okay. So there's the uh, there's the heart over here. This is the darts, and then I got the first leaf, the second leaf, and the third leaf. And in the middle of the third leaf, we're going to have just a little bit of a Ron star in there. So I'm going to start out with my sinew, wrap that around the point there, and then we're going to just fold this up like a Ron star. So I'm going to fold this over. tapestry over and bring that up and tie it off. And I do have a couple videos out on the Ron Star. I'll try to remember to put a link to one of those in this video. So we're just flipping this back and forth and tying that Ron Star right in the middle here. So we're going to fold this one back again. Fold the tapestry over. One last one here. Pull that nice and tight. A couple more wraps. And then I'm going to cut this little one off. This tail here is right where we started. I don't want that one. But this here is where we ended. So I'm going to cut that nice and long and then put my usual little knot in there and that way I can find that when it's time to open this up. Okay, now the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of scrunch this up a little bit. And just do some radio wave type folds here. And you can fold that up however you want. I just like to get gathered up and still have a little bit of a pattern in there. Just in case I want to put some other colors in. So this is really just kind of designing your tapestry how you want it to be, what, how many petals or points do you want, uh, where do you want things positioned at. So you just kind of decide that and then start lining things out. And I'm trying to give some separation here right now, just pulling this edge over to give some separation so that this here doesn't want to touch in there. I'm going to tie this pedal up just to give it a little bit more tension here. Okay, I think that is ready for some dye. I think the timing is good. Saturday Carl won't be home for another hour so I got plenty of time to dye this and sneak it into the tub and he'll find this when he washes things out. Okay so there is the Lotus Mandela with darts and hearts. Okay so to start with I think I'm going to dye the thickest part because we're going to need to come back to that a few times here. Let me, okay, I'm back. So this part here is the heart. So I'm going to dye that in fuchsia. And basically, whenever you're working with a dry tapestry, if you put dye on it once to roll off, it's because it can't quite soak in. So you can break that tension in the, the tapestry by spraying some soda ash. So I just keep some in a spray bottle here. 
and then I can spray it. But my tapestry is still just slightly damp, so I think mine's going to be fine here. So I'm going to put dye on. And I know I tied this with sinew, but I'm not really trying to create a line up here with the, a white line. I just needed to hold that together, and the sinew is going to do that the best. So what I'm going to do is dye along this black line here. This is where I drew my heart at. So that's the one that I'm actually going to dye along here. What I like to do when I have several layers of fabric that I'm dyeing is I dye from just one side. <laughs> I dye from just one side of the tapestry for a while and I just keep coming back to it and putting more dye on until I can kind of start seeing it soak through to the other side. Because if you put dye on both sides, then with all these layers it's hard to tell if you got dye all the way in the middle until you actually open it up and then at that point it's too late to add more dye to it. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is sporadically, as I'm dyeing this tapestry, come back to this really thick part here and just put more dye on it. So, let's see here. So the, the dart was yellow, so we're going to put two shades of yellow on there. And I'm going to start out with the lighter shade. Once again, I'm dying from just the top. And then this outer part here is kind of thick too. So I usually will work on the thickest parts of the tapestry first. And this one we had the two shades of blue. So I'm going to put the first shade on, which is the turquoise. And I'm going to go just a little bit away from the heart here and let the die spread on its own. And I'll do the same thing with the dart over here. Okay, so we're going to outline the lotus here with the light purple. So I'm just going right there by the leaf, or by the edge of the petal there. And we'll do that on this one too. And then on this one. Okay, I'm going to take this opportunity to throw some more dye on the heart here. Just to let it keep soaking in. Some on the darts. And the turquoise. Once again, I just kind of put it a little bit away from the line and let it spread on its own as it gets more saturated here. So that's just one of the ways you can control the flow of the dye is just by where you start at. Okay, let's mess here. And now we're going to add some darker purple into the petals.
Okay, and now I can start to see some color soaking through. I can see the turquoise is looking pretty good on there. I can see some of the fuchsia, but I'm going to go ahead and add more to that. And I'm going to need to add more of the, the purple onto the lotus. So this is going to be a matter of just coming back and adding more dye and letting it soak in. So if you start with these areas, the thicker areas, at the beginning, then while you're doing the rest of your dyeing, you can just keep coming back to those areas and add more dye. Otherwise, if you finish things up and it's still not soaked through, then I'll just walk away and I'll go do something else for a while and then I'll come back and add more dye where it's needed. So you just have to kind of keep keep at it. It takes a while to fully saturate all of them layers of fabric. Sometimes it's nice to have these small bottles. I found these on Amazon. So that's a, a nice bottle. It's got a, a fine metal tip on there. So I can put just tiny bits of dye on there. Now with the turquoise, now that we're getting closer here, I'm going to work up closer to this edge here. Finish that off and closer to the edge of the heart. And I can see some of this turquoise kind of running down, so that's those lines that you saw on the heart is this dye running down into the heart in these cracks here. So, we'll just let it do that. And then, of course, these yellow darts that had the green lines in it, it would be from the turquoise running into those lines also. So, we just kind of let that spread. And then, at this point, I'm ready to put the darker blue on. start letting that soak in. And this here I'm not going to go all the way up to my edges. I'm going to leave just a little bit of turquoise around the heart and the dart and then also the lotus flower. And we'll come back and we'll add more of that in there too. So let's touch these up and then we'll flip this over. I think we're ready to start adding dye to the other side. And then the other thing you can do with some of these smaller bits, if you want to make sure that you have the dye in there, you can give those a little bit of a squeeze or apply some pressure. So let's zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now I can take this here and squeeze and I can see the liquid pull up. Oh, you can. There. You can see the liquid pull up and then when you release the pressure then it soaks back in. And it's at that point then that you can go ahead and add more dye in there and just give it a little bit of a squeeze. We'll do the same thing with just the, the bigger fuchsia one here. So we'll add just a little bit more. And then I'm going to squeeze the fuchsia heart over here before we turn it over. And the other thing you can do if you have a bigger area that you need to squeeze with. I have a pair of channel grips that I've put. A second, sorry. 
pair of channel grips that I put duct tape over the edges here. So what you can do, and I always do this where I, if it's a, a bit that's hanging off of the tapestry, I try to turn the tapestry and drip it so that if any die squeezes out of there when I squeeze this, then it's going to pull away from there instead of running back into the tapestry, if that makes sense. So I can take that and squeeze that. You can see some die come out. So that way that's going to get more die into those folds because there are many folds in here. So that's just another way of squeezing making sure you have good saturation is just to give it a little bit of a squeeze whether you're pushing on it or you're using pliers to squeeze in there and actually I can see some of this liquid coming out is kind of light so that probably I said that the tapestry was slightly damp well this would be some of that soda ash that was left in there so I'm gonna squeeze some of that liquid out and then add more back in there. Okay, so let's flip this over now. Wipe up our mess. And we'll get this other side dyed up. Okay, so we'll start with the heart over here. And the trick is, remember on this side here, my line was up here above where the sinew was. So I need to, on the other side, follow that same path. So I'm going to come up above and then back down into just the heart area. Okay. And now my darts are looking good. That looks fairly well saturated. And then my turquoise. We're going to come in here and do the same thing. I'm going to start just a little ways away from all of my other tied up bits so that as I add the turquoise, the die can spread on its own. Okay, I think the, the heart is fairly well saturated because as I try to put more dye in there, it rests on top mostly. So we need just a little bit of the dark yellow. I'm just going to put a little bit of the dark yellow here just to give a little bit of contrast in that dart. And I'm putting it on the outer edge and letting it soak in. And then we'll put the turquoise on here. And it, what it's going to do is it's going to spread in the cracks and go in. So we're going to have the dark yellow coming in this way. We're going to have the turquoise going that way. Giving me green lines in there and dark yellow lines. The lotus flower mandela with a ron star in the middle hearts and darts around the edges so thank you for watching please like and share my videos this one here will be available uh, as soon as i do the washout in the future so thank you for watching